vision is very important object to know the details of a material if you want to study furtherly the properties and application of materials you should know the shape and size of the material these details perfectly can be provided by the scanning electron microscopy and transition electron microscopy today we are going to study about basic structure of scanning electron microscopy and transition electron microscopy in the topic of uh, chemistry of materials so go far as you can see when you get there you will be able to see further so first of all you are unable to see your target but something you are able to see if you reach that point that point will show further way to reach your target so going and vision both are very important to reach your target so vision means the ability to see sight or eyesight something that you imagine is called vision so how we are doing how we are visible to other objects when a light is passed on the object that object reflects the rays and that enter into eye through the cornea and light rays then passes through the lenses lenses magnify the uh, image of the material which changes the shape it further bend the rays and focus them on the retina so finally retina collect the details of the material and send the detail signals to the brain and our brain will give the perfect shape and further details of the material so this is the general vision of our eye so but what is the resolution of our eyesight what is the meaning of resolution resolution is defined as the smallest distance between two particles which allows them to distinguish from one another means if you keep a two objects with a distance of 0.1 millimeters and either the those two objects are one meter distance from your eyesight then your eye can able to distinguish the two materials as two materials okay then your eyesight eyesight resolution is 0.1 millimeter so generally if you keep the materials closer than the 0.1 millimeter your eye only able to identify as a single object of the two objects it's it will not distinguish two objects combinedly it will identify as a one object so the distance which distance allows the distinguish the materials is called resolution so generally eyesight resolution is 0.1 millimeter so less than 0.1 millimeter if you keep two objects so it cannot it cannot distinguish as a separate objects it distinguished and appear as one object only an object eye resolution but we we have a different dimensional objects in our everyday life so meters to nanometers is there so but our human eye only able to see are exposed to 1 meter to 1 millimeter dimensions objects only so when you when you apply the light microscope so it can be give the details of the 10 millimeters to 1 micrometer range objects only furtherly you want to see you want to proceed the details and phenomena of the materials you need to go for electron microscope So electron microscopes are best devices which provide the details of materials which having dimensions below 100 nanometers. So you can see here, optical microscope mean light to image the sample. So when you pass the light, the image details will be collected. That device is called optical microscope. Electron microscope are instead of light, we need to pass electron beam. Electrons are much energetic than the light energy. That's why they give the proper details and particular details of the small objects so what is the physical resolution of these devices our human high unaided eye can resolute up to 0.1 mm light microscope resolution is 0.2 micrometers and scanning electron microscopy is 1 nanometer 
and transition electron microscope is equal to 0.1 nanometer. That means so two object, two things, two particles, if they are separated by 0.1 nanometer, also they can be distinguished as two particles. That is the resolution of the transition electron microscopy. So or magnificence if you what is the magnificence magnificence means uh, the object size will be uh, uh, will be um, multiplied many times that is called magnification for example optical microscope multiply up to 1400 times than their original size but electron microscopy can go up to 5 lakhs times 5 lakhs times they can increase the size of the uh, real object that is called magnification. So this uh, electron microscope is having higher magnification than the optical microscope or light microscope and also we already known so optical microscope resolution is 0.2 millimeter but electron microscope SEM and TEM resolution is 0.1 to 10 nanometers. So SEM and TEM has a large depth of field, greater resolution and eye magnificence. So that's why these are very important to study the nanometers, particularly very, very small dimension objects. So first of all, scanning electron microscope. So scanning electron microscope is a device which produces the surface image of the material by scanning the surface with focused beam of electron. Here what we are applying focused beam of electrons we are applying on the surface of the material then the this focused beam of electrons scan the surface of the material and provides the surface image of the material. So SEM can be magnify object up to 3 lakhs times and resolution is about 1 nanometer. So those are the features of SEM. So you can see the diagram. So I explain in this one. So what is the principle applied here? The projected beam or electron beam interacts with the atoms in the sample. When you pass high speed electron beam over the surface of the sample, that beam interacts with the atoms which are present in the surface. So this is only surface phenomena. The electron beams only interacts with the surface atoms and resulted signals. When the signals, when the electron beam interact with the atoms, their energies will change. Yes. The, they will be reflected, though they will be scattered. The resulted signal that contain information about the surface texture and composition of the sample. The projected electron beam emitted secondary electron from excited atoms. So first what we are passing electron beam is called primary electron source. And when it is interact with the surface atoms, it can project, it can emit the secondary electrons beam. So though having a details of the surface and it can be detected by the detector and we will get a final image of the material let's see the working process of sem so first of all we need to keep a sample on a perfect uh, tray in the in the chamber once chamber is under vacuum high voltage is passed over the tungsten filament so this tungsten filament produces the high energy electrons this is act as an electrical gun it serves as a cathode so cathode is a source of electrons it will eject number of electrons from the electron guns these are scattered on the surface of the anode this anode so gives the direction to the electrons towards the sample and also towards the downside so it will give the direction to the electrons and also it accelerates the speed of the electrons now these electrons rays are passed over the condenser lens this condenser lens densify the electron beam and it will, it will condense the electrons beams and pass to over the scanning coils these scanning coils filter the electron guns so particular type of particular energy quantity energy is only allowed to the scanning coils remaining will be stopped here filtered here and finally the electron beams are uh, subjected to on the sur surface sam sample surface now sample interact with the electrons some of the electrons uh, electrons rays are ejected to backside that is called back scattering 
so this back scattering electrons are uh, uh, detected by the back scatter electron detector it gives some type of inf information so some of the electrons interact with the atoms present in the surface and they produces the emitted the secondary electrons so these secondary electrons are detected by the secondary electron gun or detector so now these detectors give the final information about the surface and morphology of the morphology of the uh, material or uh, material okay so so like that we can give the we can know the uh, surface morphology and many different applications by the same so those are the topography surface features of an object and texture so first of all we we can know the texture of the material and morphology shape and size of the particle making up the object and composition which elementals are present how uh, qualitatively we can sorry quantitatively we can measure the how much composition is there and finally crystallography how the grains are arranged in the object so their agglomeration or dispersion we can know up to some point by using the same images you can see here some applica applications so they have a higher magnificence if you see this point so this is the at a point we can uh, magnify this point up to more times this is the 100 micrometer uh, scale so if you go furtherly so this is the 10 micrometer at this particular point so it gives the diff uh, part, uh, another shape and if you see this point this point if you see this point you can also go up to this point by the magnified the one micrometer range so again you can go furtherly so to know the higher depth of focus how the morphology and shape and surface is there so up to 1.1 micrometer like that you can go up to higher depth so this is the topography and morphology of this some of the images by same applications and next one is transition electron microscopy so transition electron microscopy is, a, is also a device which provides the particle image of material by transmission of focused beam of electrons into the sample so only difference is in the same so we are scanned the we are scanned the surface of the image but here uh, electron beam is transmission of trans transferred through the material and give a particle image this is the important thing and it can be magnify the object up to 5 lakhs times and resolution is 0.2 nanometer it has a better qualities better um, features than the same so temp provide the information of phase thickness of sample orientation atomic arrangement and also particle size of the material you can see the diagram so only thing is in some sample is kept at the last last at the bottom of the instrument but in the temp sample is kept in, in, in between the different objects okay that is only different here so you can see here the sample is kept at the bottom of the instrument but the sample is taken in the middle of the instruments so again after after transmission the electron beam they also object they also pass over the objective lens and projector lens to magnify the size so to to go further depth and give the more details of the materials so we are passing the uh, exact we are passing the transmitted rays through the objective lens and projector lens to finally screen to know the better details so you can see here so up to condenser lens same as same so up to condenser lens there is no change electron gun produces electrons it passed over the anode anode give the direction and speed and condenser lenses condenses the material and passes over the directly to the sample now this the electron beam is transmitted over the sample into the sample so uh, electrons is passed into the sample and when they are passing they are interacting with the materials so depending on the size depending on the structure depending on the arrangement the interactions are varies now interacted electron beam collected at the objective lens and projector lens this will be magnify and gives the more details and finally they reaches to screen screen give the final image and details of the material
this is the basic structure of the temp so you can see here this is these are the left side are the so images of the same images of the same of the same material and you can see the right side temp images of the same material so you will not get a more images only will get a elemental analysis from the sem so but morphology also is there but there is no clarity on the morphology but if you see the tem here the three weight percentage of copper on zirconia seria support that mean your study of the copper weight percentage on the zirconia support three weight percentage seven percentage and 10 weight percent 15 weight percentage that mean when we are increasing the uh, percentage of the some active metal on the support how it is oriented what is the size effects here studied so if you see the year so average size is 4.9 nanometers average particle size of copper is 4.9 nanometers when it is three weight percentage doped so when it is seven percentage doped the average size is increased to 6.1 nanometers and further it is increased at 9.2 and 9.9 .9 when you are applied 15 weight percent of carbon so now particle sizes are increased now this material are now this material are subjected to some catalytic reactions and how results are coming and how particle size is there by correlating that they will come to one conclusion this particle this much particle size having metals are active this much particle size metals are inactive like that we can know the applications by knowing the features of the materials like size morphology these are the very important things of the cement term provide de providing details so this is the topic for today thank you for listening and thank you very much